Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1536. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to use Power Query to import text data to create an accounting schedule of accounts. We have a text file, and we're going to use the amazing Power Query to import the data, transform it, and then we'll build a pivot table with a slicer so we can select whichever expense group we need our schedule of accounts for and instantly our report will update. Now back in Excel Magic Trick 1530, we actually saw the same example, but there we use dynamic arrays. Here we have this text file and we're going to use the amazing Power Query and the good old standby pivot table. Now let's go look at the text file. Now here's our text file, and this is for a particular month. There's the folder path. And each month, we drop the new text data month file into the current month folder. In this way, it's easy for us, because with Power Query, we can simply point Power Query to the folder. And then next month, when we have the new file here, we simply refresh in Excel, and it will see the new file. Now right now, we have January. Later, we can drop into this current month folder, February. Or we could have multiple months and then use the filters inside of our pivot table to get at whichever particular month or expense group we want. Now let's take a look. I'm going to double click and open this. We have one, two, three different columns in this text file. The delimiter that separates the columns is tab. All right, I'm going to close this and go over to Excel. Now we're in this Start folder, which you can download below the video. And we're on the sheet 1536. Now in the Data Ribbon tab, we have to find the Get and Transform group and then the Get Data dropdown. Now depending on what version, Excel 2013, 16, Office 365, Get and Transform may either be on the left or the right. And Get Data may be called Get External Data. But whatever version, we click the drop down, point to From File, and then down here, that's the amazing option. Now, in earlier versions, the icon is yellow here. I'm in Office 365, so it's got this white icon. But From Folder, that's what we want. Click. It wants to know the folder path. I click Browse. I find the location of the current month. When I click on Current Month, I'm telling Power Query to import all of the files that are in that folder. For us, we're only going to have one text file at a time in that folder. Now I click OK. That's the folder path. If that folder path changes, we'll have to edit the folder path inside of Power Query. Now I'm going to click OK. This is a preview step. We want to click Edit. I do not want to click Combine or Load. I want to click Edit. And this is the Power Query Editor. We can see some information about the one file in that folder. Over here, Source, that's where we can edit the folder path if we need to. We can click on the gear icon. That brings it back up. I'm going to click Cancel. I want to rename this query. We're going to call it Current Month Text Files for Accounts and Enter. That is the name of the query. If we need to edit this query later, we have to look for the query with that name. Now we have some columns with attributes about the file. This is the column content that has the data we need to import. If we click off to the side, not on the green binary word, but off to the side, we can see down here it says, hey, I found a text file. Now we want to convert that text file to a proper data set. So we're going to use this double downward pointing arrow. Notice it says Combine Files. This option to convert a text file to a proper data set works even if we had multiple files all with the same table structure. Now when I click this button, it's going to keep the name column because we're actually going to need to extract Jan. And then for the February file, extract Feb. So I'm going to click the Combine Files button. Now it's going to ask us what the delimiter is. It interpreted tab as the correct delimiter. Now I'm going to click OK. It's going to do a bunch of steps, including creating a bunch of queries off to the left. And it created this custom function, which Power Query will use each time we refresh with a new file. Over here, here's all the automatic steps, including the invoke custom function and change data type. 
But sure enough, this whole process created our proper data set from that text file. Now we need to do a few things before we can use this in our pivot table. The first thing is change type. You always want to check. Text is fine. Text is fine. That's the icon ABC. If I click the data type icon, I can see a bunch of different options. But text is fine for those. 1.2, that's the icon for decimal number. You use decimal if you want up to 15 digits. Currency if you want up to four digits. If you wanted to round, you could actually right click, transform, round, and then tell it round like to the penny, which is two. We're going to keep it as is. So the data type is fine. Now we do want to extract the three character month abbreviation. Remember, later we'll have Feb and Mar. So I'm going to make sure and select the column, come up to Transform, Text Column Group, Extract. There it is, first characters. I'm going to tell it get the first three characters. Click OK. Now the last thing we want to do is rename this. So I double click and call this Month and Enter. Now each one of our columns has the correct name and data type. Those are all the steps. That's the name of the query. Now we're going to load this. So we go back to Home, the Close group, drop down for Close and Load. And we want the second option, Close and Load 2. This is the Import Data dialog box. If I wanted it as a table, I could use that option. But guess what? I only want to use Power Query as an intermediate step to get the text data, create the proper data set, but then I don't need the data in a table. I just want to go straight to a pivot table. So I'm going to select that option. Not on a new worksheet. I want it existing. A5 is fine. Click OK. Now we have two panes, queries and connections. This lists all of our queries that were created. I can collapse this group. There's the one query. If I need to come back and edit it, I can by simply double clicking. If I needed to do whatever, change the data type or the name, or change the source, I could. Now I'm going to click Close. Now this Queries and Connections, we can close this pane. If we need to get back to the query later, we can go to the Data Ribbon tab, Queries and Connections. This is a toggle to turn on and off that pane. Now we're left with Pivot Table Fields, and there it is. Perfect. We have our fields from our proper data set that Power Query created for this. Now this is in the cache. Later when we put a different file in the folder and update, that cache will update with the latest data. Now I want Expense Group down in Rows, Account Name down below Expense Group, Amount down to Values. Now inside the Pivot Table in the Values column, I'm going to right click and select Number Formatting. Select something like Currency, Two Decimals, click OK. Now I want a slicer to pick out just the expense group. So I go up to Pivot Table Tools, Analyze. Over in the Filter group, click Insert Slicer. Now we want to select Expense Group, click OK. And there's our slicer. We can resize it. And when I select Power, Fuel, and Expense, there's my schedule of accounts. Legal and professionals, boom, just like that. Now, actually, this is for January, and we want to change the file in the folder to February. But let's, in the pivot table, drag the month column down to the filters area. Now, I actually have some data there. I'm going to click Cancel. This is actually the link to 1530, where we did a similar project, but with dynamic arrays. Watch this. I'm going to highlight point to the edge, click and drag to move it. Now I'm going to click in the pivot table, come over, drag month down to filters. I'm going to select January just so I visually see it. Now let's Control S, go back over to Windows Explorer. Here's the current month. But when you download this and unzip it, there's two other files. I want to copy February. And in current month, I want to Control V. Actually, I'm going to click and drag since I'm doing it on the same drive. It will move it. So I'm going to move it. Now we only have February inside of current month. January is back over here. So since Power Query is pointing to current month, when I come back over to Excel, Alt-Tab, go to Data, click Refresh All, or I can use the keyboard Control-Alt-F5. 
And there I can see now it's telling me February. And there's the schedule of accounts. Traveling expense admin. There it is. All right, so in this video, we definitely saw how to use Power Query to import a text file and convert it to a proper data set. But we didn't store it in an Excel table. We just stored it directly in the cache and built a pivot table for our schedule of accounts. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.